Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Pixel Punks Podcast, Episode 2. Before we begin, I'd like to say that we had a different recording setup for this episode, and the audio quality didn't come out quite as well as I had hoped. I tried to fix it as best as I could, um, and there's a little bit of a thumping sound that's happening on there, but it doesn't happen the whole time. Uh, I hope you can ignore that and just enjoy the episode for what it is. It's a good episode. Uh, So sit back and relax and enjoy Barbenheimer. Hey, welcome to the Pixel Punks podcast, where we talk about nerd culture. My name's Kyle San. I'm Nadim. And we are here with my lovely wife, Amanda. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, the Barbie movie in this episode, um, and I thought it would be probably wise. more appropriate and wise to bring a woman along to talk about it. <laughs> Where is she? Because um, I think two dudes talking about the Barbie movies. We're in that mirror. Kind right? of funky. Yeah, don't address the mirror. What mirror? There's a giant mirror right there. Don't. I thought you said don't address it. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys doing today? Doing good? Yeah. Yeah? It's too hot to work. It is too hot. It's, oh, it's yeah, hot yeah, yeah. What it's is like it? It's like 90 something degrees right yeah. now. It's like 95. Yeah. Tomorrow will be 110. Isn't this like, this is like Hell's Front Porch? Like that meme? But I do love the heat though, so. Oh. It's still too hot, but I love it. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> so. no. Um, I blame Oppenheimer. So we were going to talk about Barbenheimer, since that's a big cultural thing happening right now. Um, Amanda and I went and saw uh, the double feature, back to back. We saw Oppenheimer first. And then Barbie movie seconds. Which is the correct way to do it. Right. If you're going to do it, that's how you do it. (laughs) I promise. And then on a happy note. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Well, ish. I don't know. Yeah. Um, But um, but yeah, they're both movies, I think, go together pretty well because they're very polar opposites. Um, And yeah, we had like an hour in between each showing, so we went and got some food. Smart. You saw them two different days, right? Yes. And did I tell you a story about Friday? Um, when I went to go see the movie, um, I got tickets. You did? I, I just, this morning, right. So, I yeah, this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I got tickets for the movie, and I got tickets for Barbie Thursday, early access, and then the same, the uh, whatever day, the debut day, mm-hmm. for that Oppenheimer. And I went in, and the guy scanned my thing, and he was like, uh, he was confused, and he was like, what theater does it say? And I was like, it says 11. He's like, oh, okay, that's around the corner, which I should have oh, should have yeah. taken that as a hint, but I didn't. <laughs> So I got, we got food, $40 worth of food. We get to the, <laughs> to the room we get in and I was like, this doesn't look right. Cause it's supposed to be the 70 millimeter. Oh no. And this is like definitely all the way in the back around the corner. And I was like, uh, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> Open the door. There's only two people there, which I didn't tell you about those pe- two people were doing. There's only two people there and I can't find the seats that I'm supposed to be at. And then one of them is like, Hey, this movie's already two and a half hours in. We also rented this whole theater. Oh really? We rented the whole theater. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, what? It doesn't make any sense. So I left Dang. food in hand, and I'm looking at it, and it says AMC 21. I was at 18. No. <laughs> so. Oh my god, we did that once when we were gonna go see. We went to a completely wrong theater. Yeah, we oh. showed up like a week before the showing. Fuck. When we went to go see um 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 um, um, um the Lin Manuel Miranda. Ah, the the oh. in the Heights. We went to go see oh. In the Heights, oh, and we showed yeah. up a week early, and we get to the theater. We've paid for parking, and we were going to see it um, at uh, the Music Box, okay. which is an old theater in, in here in Chicago. Oh. And so we get all the way there, and we get to the building, and they're like, that doesn't start for another week. And I was so upset. And then you got me ice cream. Man, I don't remember that at all. I mean, me getting you ice cream sounds about right. Because there's a, D, like a <laughs> DQ oh, there's right a DQ by right it. Yeah. it. It was in the Heights. Yeah, so man. We just didn't see a movie at all. No, they gave us our money back. Oh, nice. Oh, because you bought, you bought the tickets, but you thought it was that day, yeah. not a different day. Okay. It was, but it was like the following week. Man, I don't know why I just completely don't remember that. Like, I remember kind of a little bit, but... Yeah, I was able to get my refund for those tickets, too. And then I got tickets for Monday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was going to see it Monday. In I, not in IMAX, but in um, the Dolby Cinema with the sound. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was I so wanted good. to see it in IMAX, but I get so motion sick yeah. with IMAX that I, I wouldn't have appreciated it. Yeah. Limax? <laughs> Did I show you that picture? No. <laughs> no? That, like, the real IMAX screen is supposed to be, like, huge. Oh, we talked about Oh, yeah, too. yeah. The IMAX screen yeah. is a lot bigger than, like, because they make, like, the, the fake IMAX. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be IMAX. more like a planetarium style. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Instead of just... Yeah. The closest one is, like, six hours away in Indiana. And I was like, I'm not <laughs> doing that. Is it, <laughs> yeah. in, is it in Indianapolis? 
Uh, probably. Yeah, it's there was, right. um, I saw an IMAX, it was like the extended version of Avatar 2009. It was like after it had come out. It was like a couple months after it came out. They added like extra scenes and they did like the extra, like the extra edition, whatever. Yeah. Um, extended edition, like, whatever. I can't talk. Um, but yeah, it was like that. It was we went to we. I lived in Ohio at the time. We right. drove all the way to Indianapolis to see it, and it yeah. was like really huge. big. It was like yeah. huge. Yeah. It kind of like went over our heads a little bit, and it was awesome. It was so Can't. cool. Um, so then that's when I realized I'm like, IMAX is a lie. It is. It's a IMAX. <laughs> IMAX. Um, One day experience. But yeah, we were talking about how um, when we went and saw Oppenheimer, the bass, like, yeah. the, the, it was very bass heavy with the music and, and rattled the sounds. Everything. And yeah, and you were saying, like, you're, you said, like, the ceiling tiles were yeah. rattling in your theater. It was crazy. And then if you see it at the new 400, yeah. which is a little movie theater here in Rogers Park, mm-hmm. I hope it survives because it's my favorite. I'm sure the ceiling tiles will do that there too because oh, it's yeah. so little mm-hmm. and it's not really made for that level of cinematic immersion yeah, yeah. because it's, you know, from the 1920s. So yeah. it just wasn't. It won't make for that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been out there in so long. It's so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, we also, after we got done with Barbie, we were leaving and we could hear all the theaters like, yeah. in the hallway just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like. That it's... was Barbie movie. Oh, are you sure? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of bass in Barbie movie. It's all I'm about just Ken. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so do we want to talk about Oppenheimer then? We'll start with that. Well, yeah. That's, I mean, it's three hours to talk about, yeah, so yeah, 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 might as well. It's very long, very good movie. Christopher Nolan at his best. Um, I the, I did get a, pretty confused with all the like, timeline jumping around. Yeah, there's a lot of like jumping around to different time periods. It's and like The Witcher. They did the like show. the. I haven't seen The Witcher. Oh. What's what they do? Have you watched it? No. I just thought <laughs> it was funny that you said it's like The Witcher. Yeah, and, and if you I mean, watch... the video game does that a little bit. If you watch the show, it's literally like, here's here's this time, and then all of a sudden, everybody looks different, and it just like, immediate cut into that. I'm like, uh-huh. what is going on here? Like, did he get a haircut? What is this? It was weird, but it's just like The Witcher, but yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. But they do some scenes in black and white, which is supposed to be like, yes. farther into the future. But like, there were some like... Like, here's the past, which is in color. Here's the present in color. Here's, like, kind of in the future, which is in color. And then way in the future, it's black and white. So it was kind of weird. Do you actually know what that was? So I I, I saw this interview he Uh was doing with someone. And he was saying that the color one was actually from Oppenheimer's point of view. Oh. Of everything. And the black and white is that uh, the guy who was a cute... uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. That's his point of view of Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. So that's what that was. Yeah. Okay, okay. See, I didn't pick that up. Did you pick that up? I did, and then I saw that interview, too, and I've seen people talking about it on TikTok also. Oh, okay. Just evaluating it, because people are pretty split on whether or not they like that cinematic Mm -hmm. feature. I really liked it, but I also just really like Christopher Nolan as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Um, See, I didn't pick that up, because I just think black and white, because in Better Call Saul, they do black and white as the future. Yeah. And then color was in the past, so, like, that's what I was thinking they were doing. But I think that's one of the great things about Christopher Nolan's less mainstream films, Mm -hmm like the prestige, um, is that he puts a little bit more artistic influence into it. Mm -hmm. And it's not so straightforward, like the dark Knight or inception. Um, so this felt very much like a Christopher Nolan film. Um, and I, I truly think this is his swan song. Mm -hmm. He could make a hundred more films, but I really think he's going to be remembered for Oppenheimer. So good. Yeah. Yeah. The old man who played, uh, uh, Albert Einstein was really cute. That's like my <laughs> grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> In like the nicest way I can say that if my parents listen to this. He looked like my grandmother. Yeah. I'm super German, so it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and I really liked how like um, there was all like like at the beginning there was a lot of it was at the beginning of the movie, but like little cuts here and there where we just like show like science. And, I like, love boom, that. Like that. And all that stuff. That's yeah. like his mind is always just going and right. thinking about it. And I yeah, love yeah. it. And none of that is CGI. Right. All that was real. That's one of the things yeah. I it's love so about good. Christopher oh, Nolan. He does things the most practically he, so practical. he can. Yeah. yeah. I just think he's amazing. He's I, absolutely amazing. I also love and hate the fact that some of the most frequent Google searches of that movie are like, is Oppenheimer real life? <laughs> but also, um, which countries did Christopher Nolan blow up? For the nuclear bomb scenes in Oppenheimer. <laughs> N- none. Yeah. What, in what world yeah. 
I don't. <laughs> I used to love, I, I love watching, looking at those memes that came out mm-hmm. when they're like, because they said all of that was uh, practical mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And they're like, when uh, it was like a meme of him looking at the lenses as it explodes. Mm-hmm. But it, like, it was saying that like when the actors get to blow up their own actual nuclear bomb and all that stuff. <laughs> I love those memes. They're so good. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure the the big mushroom cloud was CGI, but then it was real. But then the it close, was real. It was real. Yeah. But th- 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 then what he did had, he actually blow up? <laughs> so he, he, it was multiple explosions that they layered on top of each oh, other to okay. make it seem like that. Okay. But it was all real. Everything I, was real. I knew that the close ups of the explosion were real. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know that the far zoom out. Like, wow, that's so. Cool. That's why I was so I excited to that. see this film. Yeah, yeah. Because the closest thing, um, Christopher Nolan kept on a lot of the same um, pyrotechnic folks that he had for Dark Knight. Nice. The Dark Knight trilogy. And the biggest thing they had done to date was that giant semi-truck flip um, yeah. in the Dark Knight. And that was real. Yeah. And after that happened, and they were approached with this film not like idea, they looked to each other and said, how the hell are we going to make this work? Yeah. We're all going to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> but clearly, they, they made, made it work. work. Yeah. And I agree. I think the the macro view of fission and the different so particles and elements that we're seeing because that is what he is seeing. Like yeah. He sees the world in such a unique way. Yeah. I think it's beautiful that they had that reflected in the film. Um, although part of my like qualm with the film about how they didn't really expound upon the complexities of the nuclear bomb yeah. and what that meant for the world uh, or just kind of Oppenheimer's problematic tendencies as a person. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of like Greatest Showman. Yeah. It's a great film, but man, <laughs> P.T. Barnum was a trash person. He was, yeah. And I kind of feel the same way about Oppenheimer. Like, Oppenheimer was a genius, and the hand-wringing that he does throughout the film about, oh, they're going to hurt people with this giant bomb I'm making uh, yeah. kind of got old for me. Mm-hmm. Like, oh... You made a bomb right. that is now going to be used right. as a bomb. You don't get to be sad yeah. about it. Bro, you made a bomb. <laughs> so but all he, of the memes are just... And that amazing. was the thing. Like He was excited, too, he, when they were first talking about yeah. it. When they are like, you know what that means? Bomb. Yeah. Or something like that. Whatever that scene was. I was like, uh, I didn't know that was how it went. <laughs> yeah. There was that scene uh, where Oppenheimer and... Um, Florence Pugh were just sitting naked <laughs> in their chairs and it was so like you said when we went into the movie you were like the only great people have is that you're looking at Florence Pugh's boobs for like two minutes straight <laughs> well because it doesn't make sense yeah. it just it, it almost kind of felt like the Quentin Tarantino foot thing right where you're yeah. just watching them sit butt ass naked mm-hmm. in chairs for no reason yeah. other than we got Florence Pugh. Look how beautiful she is. Also, here's her boobs. Yeah. What, what what did that add to this? Right. Nothing. It didn't. I mean, it's an interesting scene, but they could have been clothed, and it still would have been yeah. an interesting yeah. dichotomy. Yeah, um, I didn't take issue with it the way that like TikTok women did, yeah. where they were like, "Oh, my boyfriend just wanted to go see this because of Florence Pugh's boobs." But then the <laughs> queer community, which is like my side of TikTok, mm-hmm. um, was like, "Oh, I love that part of the." <laughs> But, like, so you know the scene when they're sitting on top of each other naked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, like... Where she's having him read the Sanskrit? Is it? Are you talking about No, when, when, in the interview. Oh, in the interview. Oh, in the interview. Yeah, 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 they do, yeah. That, I didn't, like, that's the one part of the movie where I just, like, zoned out and thought about it, like, behind the camera. Mm-hmm. And, like, just thinking about, like, that you actually have to sit there with this other yeah. person on top of you. Both of you are naked yeah. and there's all a bunch of people, eyes directly on yeah. you. That's so weird. And I couldn't, yeah. like, get past that point because I was just, like... Like, I could feel all those eyes on me. That she did, scene was so cool, though. Yeah, it was. It was great. She did look a little comped in. I yeah. think maybe she... I think he was sitting there naked, and then I think they comped her in on top of him. Oh, you think him. so? Maybe. Maybe not for the scene where his... Where, um... Uh, Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt was looking yeah, at them. I think from that angle, she was actually there. But I think when they were, like, trim and the scene transitioned, and she was there. Because oh. the, the camera was, like, rotating around a person. Because he was fully clothed, and it rotated around a person, and then he was naked. And then I think it did it again, and then she was there. Well, maybe, and yeah. So, I don't know. But, I mean, that's what intimacy directors are for. Right, and yeah. that's what, like, yeah. privacy garments are for. Mm-hmm. And they probably just shot it the way they would shoot a sex scene. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but I really, I loved that scene. Like, yeah. I, I felt it was such a beautiful transition into Oppenheimer's 
like nakedness right. spoiler alert i guess uh <laughs> in this in this conference room setting yeah. that all of a sudden he's being truly exposed yeah. for the things that he's done that are not related yeah. to what they're even talking about mm-hmm. and i think that that's that's just brilliant and shows the level of um insecurity that he started to feel yeah, yeah. and just how profoundly inappropriate that let's call it an interrogation because that's right. what it was yeah, yeah. just that's how right, yeah. inappropriate that month long interrogation was right. of him yeah. that wasn't even about the science yeah. yeah that was during the 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 red scare the second yeah. red scare so oh, yeah dude you know anything about that not really it's stupid it's absolutely stupid <laughs> but it was just what some... was the second red scare it was this power hungry senator called him some senator mccarthy or joseph whatever. mccarthy yeah. he's from wisconsin oh. and... hey <laughs> yeah and uh he was just like basically blacklisting everybody, anybody, oh, he, anybody, and everybody he could, especially and, Hollywood. Yeah, oh, okay. definitely um, Hollywood. If there was any inkling whatsoever that you were a communist, a mm-hmm. communist sympathizer, or you were related to or friends with a suspected communist, mm-hmm. they didn't need any proof that you were a communist. Mm-hmm. You just go to jail, or you would, you know, get in a lot of trouble, or yeah. you just got completely blackballed from the industry. Wow. Joseph McCarthy ruined a lot of lives. Yeah, absolutely did. Yeah, crazy. it's cr- it's insane. Yeah, and nobody really talks about it, but it was like yeah. a really messed up time. Huh. And it's still like it still kind of spreads into today where people are like, communists are bad. Which yeah, certain parts of communism is bad, but like mm-hmm. back then it was just like if you're a communist, you're the enemy. Yeah, and it was just ridiculous. Yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And I think it's interesting. I didn't know this. I didn't know that the Communist Party was in America too. Oh, oh yeah. That. Well, this... no, I know, but I mean, like. It was pretty profound at that time, yeah. and then once the once the whole World War Two stuff started happening, they're like, "You're a commie!" And like, well, yeah, and that's another thing where like it died out because if you were communist, jail, yeah, no reason, yeah. just go right to jail, jail right away, straight to jail right away. Um, well, and it's kind of like similar to like socialism in America. People are like, "Oh, you're a socialist." Well, people view them as the same thing, right? Which, Even yeah. though they're dogmatically they're not, so right, not the same thing yeah. Yeah. at all. Yeah. But people like to liken them to one another, right? Because it's, it's easier like for this. them than actually learning about either of them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, but yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, sorry, go. They did a good <laughs> job. They did a great job of like just portraying all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Craziness. We yeah, we jinxed when we said, but yeah. Oh, did we? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize. <laughs> um, I think the acting in Oppenheimer was really, really well done. Who's the actor who plays Oppenheimer? I've seen him in like a few other things. Killian or Cillian? Killian, Cillian. Yeah. What's his um, name? Which I'm pretty it? sure it's Cillian. Cillian Murphy. Oh, okay. Because yeah. he's an Irish actor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was calling him Cillian Murphy, yeah. but I heard him say his own name, and I think it's Cillian Murphy. He's got such high cheekbones. He does. Yeah. But he looks j- almost like really close to yeah. Oppenheimer. It's, it's insane. Yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I was showing, during our little break during Barbenheimer, I was showing Kyle uh, an article, I think it might have been BuzzFeed, where they did a side-by-side yeah. of the actor versus the, the historical person. And a lot of the dudes look so much like their person. Oh, really? And then Emily Blunt and Florence Pugh look nothing like their people. <laughs> and that just really bothered me. Yeah. I was like, oh, cool. So all the dudes, it doesn't really matter. They, this is what you look like? Cool. Women, gotta be hot. Yeah. <laughs> gotta be hot. <laughs> I was thinking about that when cool. I saw Florence Pugh. Not that she's, like, not perfect so for the role much. or anything, yeah, but yeah. I was just like, did the real person really look... No, as... not even kind of. Right. Emily Blunt looks more like her historical persona. Yeah. Florence Pugh, it's like night and day. That's what it's I thought. It's very interesting. Yeah. But go for her, because get that bag. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Love She's Florence still great, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was thinking about how Florence Pugh is in Greta Gerwig's other movie, uh, Little Women. Hmm. And I was like, I wonder if she got offered to be in Barbie movie, to be one of the Barbies. But maybe she like opted to do Oppenheimer instead. Ah, opted to do Oppenheimer. <laughs> hey. That was good. Um, like how Amy Schumer was supposed to be stereotypical Barbie. Instead of Margot Robbie. Wait, really? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. She turned it down for creative differences. Nice. I wouldn't have watched the Amy Schumer version. Yeah. That's interesting. Is it? Thank God. I liked her yeah. for a while. I'm just yeah. kind of over her now. Yeah. Sorry, that it's, was it's like one. It's that's like how Will Smith turned down The Matrix. Because he'd rather do, he wanted to do Wild Wild West. Because he thought it was going to be better. Yeah, I thought it was going to be better. And Wild Wild West bombed. So the Matrix was like <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Is, is there anything like you didn't like about Oppenheimer aside from the female thing? 
Oh, I the the jumping, the time jumping around. Oh, I love oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, like it was cool, but it was also kind of confusing because I'm like, where, what time period are we? What's going they on? They did the. Uh, so sometimes I got a little confused. But. I think Nolan did a pretty good job of lining up the the story though, mm-hmm. yeah. so that it would jump forward in time. Um, to get and do black and white. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would still be sort of about whatever was happening in the past. Mm-hmm. So it was almost like, here's what's happening in the past. Here's the ramifications of whatever decisions are being made. Mm-hmm. And then you go back to the past again. Yeah. Um, so that's why the time jumping didn't bother me because I, I think that. he did it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can also see why it would confuse people yeah, because yeah. you weren't the only one. Like right, right. a lot of the people I've seen on TikTok talking about Oppenheimer, that has been their main, oh, interesting. Okay. you know, bug. That's another thing. So, like, what, the one thing that helped me the most is how they aged, de-aged, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, his hair and everything. Yeah. But... It looked really good. Like, so good. Yeah. Like, there's no way Robert Downey Jr. looks like that. No, no. That was insane. Yeah. I then, didn't even recognize him at yeah, first. It took me it took, two yeah. scenes. And I hit Kyle. I was like, that's Robert Downey Jr. It was, it was so like, Yeah, good. The actor who played Oppenheimer, I didn't know what age he actually was. Yeah. Because he looks young at the beginning, then he looks he's old 49? at the end. And that makes sense. So, like, the middle stuff is probably about what he looked like. You know, him and Florence Pugh are 20 years apart. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. He, she's 27, 28, something like that, and he's 20 years older. Wow. That's yeah, that was the other same. issue I had with the women. Yeah. Well, well, always no. the issue <laughs> yeah. with the women. Well, I mean, Florence Pugh also dated Zach Braff, and he was two years older than him. Oh, yeah, I didn't know for, that. Like, during, like, the pandemic for, like, really? five years, I think. That's just a really, like, that has just always been a, a trope in Hollywood, though, yeah. even dating back to, um, what film did I just see it? talk about i think it was maybe it was white christmas where there's like a 35 year age difference between mm-hmm. the female and the male love interests mm-hmm. that's just a thing that we yeah. do and it's just acceptable because yeah. women age out of hollywood yeah unfortunately but i think other than that my my biggest issue with oppenheimer was just the lack of historical context. Mm. I was telling Kyle that while they kind of touched upon how the decision was made of which of the less than a dozen Japanese cities that were still standing after the air raids and the bombings, um, that's kind of all they gave for context about choosing Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But that's not even close to the only reason. Like, I don't know. I, when you make films like this, and Greatest Showman, again, is an excellent example, you have to cater to the fact that this is a film for the masses, and mm-hmm. and you can't give as much historical context to it because it, it takes away from the story, it yeah. will make it seven hours long, it turns into a TED Talk. But I feel like they could have done a little bit more mm-hmm. in talking about how they chose Nagasaki and Hiroshima because it was going to do the most damage there. Yeah. Because there were fewer tall buildings, there was more farmland, they could literally measure how much damage the bombs did. I think it's interesting that Christopher Nolan decided not to show the bombings and that the way they found out that they bombed them was on the radio. You know what I mean? I'm so grateful that he did that because, yeah. one, that's what would have actually happened. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two, I think that, and this is a, an issue that I have with films about war or just about mass destruction in general, is that it sometimes it becomes almost like a snuff film. Yeah. Where the only reason you watch it <clears throat> is for the horrific pain. Right. And when I realized that that wasn't going to happen, that this wasn't going to turn into almost gore porn, Mm -hmm. I was really grateful that that's the choice that he made. Yeah, absolutely. What did you think about that scream? When he was, uh, when he went to that, like, gymnasium or whatever that was, and everybody was, like, hitting the... Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the light happened and the scream, I think that was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just, like, it was just another part of that thing where it's, like, I'm going to make this bomb. And now you live with the consequences yeah, yeah, of yeah. what damage this bomb well, it's actually It's crazy because they were all like cheering and, yeah. and then they would see people crying and then you would see yeah. like people's like flesh being ripped away. That lady. And like. That was his daughter. Oh, the lady really? with her, with the flesh being. Oh, oh really? Like Celia Murphy's daughter? Yeah. That's so interesting. No. Was no. It? no, no, no. Uh, uh, up, Cri- no. Christopher Nolan's Christopher Nolan's daughter. daughter. Yeah, That's sorry. interesting. Hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I don't know. I just learned that like two days ago. <laughs> Pretty cool. I think the ways in which they, they demonstrate PTSD for him yeah. Yeah. is really fascinating, especially because we don't talk about how moral injury and PTSD can affect people, even if they're not at the site that the thing has happened in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And also, we just don't 
We just don't really show it in any honest way in the media. No. So I think it was just a really beautiful, beautiful is the wrong word, a really <laughs> honest portrayal yeah. Yeah. of how PTSD can affect you and how it can affect you when you haven't even seen it. Right. You know, that was a point in time where unless maybe he saw leaked photos from the government, he couldn't have known exactly what happened, mm -hmm. but he did. Yeah. Like, his mind is such that he could still imagine what happened. Well, he did eventually, they did see those pictures when they were sitting in that uh, room, and he, they were going through the pictures of, like, the damage that was done. Was that, but was that before? That was after. The, yeah. So he made that after. Oh, you're talking about before. Yeah. Oh, like, okay, in okay. that, in that auditorium scene when they're still at Los oh, Alamos, yeah, yeah, yeah. he couldn't have seen those photos yet that we're aware of. Yeah. So he's just imagining with his, you know, scientific mind, the ramifications of this bomb and how it would have just completely decimated these people and the culture and just the society at large. The fact that he could imagine that and had to live with that, having never even seen the damage it had done. Yeah. Can you tell I studied film in college? <laughs> Well, that's why I wanted to bring you on, because you have so much good things to say about film. I have good things to say. Yeah. What did you think about that score? What score? The music. Oh, the, the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said the score, I thought, like, baseball. 69. <laughs> 69. Um, the, the music was really good, yeah. It was yeah. anxiety-inducing. Yeah. I think being in that, like, the... So you guys watched an IMAX, right? No, no, we no? just saw like a digital. I can't well, watch it. Because she gets eye, oh. she gets motion sickness. Three hours of oh, that yeah, would have yeah, knocked yeah. me on my butt. Yeah. Um, did you watch them like the Dolby Cinema by any chance? Because there's, there's digital and there's cinema. Yeah, I think there's we saw Dolby. I honestly don't know. Oh. Yeah. I just bought whatever was at eleven a.m. Oh, well, we yeah. It was it was the sound sounded really good. I'm pretty sure we saw it in Dolby. Yeah, because yeah. it was like. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably that yeah, was yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I that part when they were like, and I've seen the video, like the actual video of the Trinity test. I don't know if it was the Trinity test, but I've seen like all those videos of like the bombs exploding and everything. So, like, I know what was going to happen. I know how it works out. I knew, uh, spoiler alert, I knew they were going to make the bomb. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Bomb. I knew it was going to explode. I knew everything was going to happen. Yeah, but yeah. still, when they were counting down, and it was just like, five, four, three, I was like, nervous. oh, man, like, yeah, this yeah. is it. This is I, it. It's funny, because I got nervous, too. It was, you know yeah. I mean? And then it was quiet. Yeah. You know, and then, like, it was so and then they did the good. boom, and then they, like, whoa. Oh, I like, love that they did that, yeah. too. Yeah. But the, like, the music was like that the entire film. Yeah. yeah. The the building was, and the, oh my God, and so the waning and the building and the waning. I was anxious the whole film yeah. and i think that's why to me it didn't feel long in a negative way mm -hmm. sometimes i feel like those huge historical films kind of feel like they're dragging on yeah. partly because the music and the effects and the atmosphere isn't keeping me fully engaged but right. oppenheimer did yeah yeah, yeah if that movie was four hours i would have been so happy about that too. <laughs> I, i'll I watch the director's cut let's go yeah. <laughs> six hours later give me that snyder's cut yeah. titanic <laughs> snyder's can do it cut. so can i didn't they make a snyder's cut joke in barbie movie they did they yeah did. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good transition we should uh, talk yeah. about barbie, barbie movie barbie. i almost, I almost, I almost said we should head into barbie movie we could a weird thing to say she headed into the real world so. yeah, yeah amanda has a really good barbie voice i do do you yeah do it <laughs> Hi, my name is Barbie. Welcome to Fairytopia. That's insane. Fairytopia. That's like the, the thing that I memorized. <laughs> because that was the computer game you had, right? It was I think it was. A, I think it's a movie. Oh, okay. Or like a series a of Barbie movies. Movie? Yeah. But like, hi, my name's Amanda. We're going to talk about Greta Gerwig's The Barbie Movie. That's good. That's really good. Which That's I so awesome. loved. <laughs> I would watch Greta Gerwig do nothing. Like I, yeah. I just, <laughs> Lady Bird, Little Women. Yeah. Barbie movie. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Those are her three movies, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lady Bird, dead. Little Women, dead. Barbie movie, dead. I, all, I'm all dissed dead. <laughs> They're just so good. She's yeah. just such an incredible filmmaker. Yeah, she is. <sighs> yeah. Barbie movie was really good. Um, obviously, it was more empowering for women. I think we had people crying in our theater. I was really? crying in our um, theater. Yeah. Oh. Um, the the I, were women weeping. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, just crying. No. The woman behind me was just openly yeah, weeping. She was weeping. Multiple um, times throughout the film. Yeah. And um, there was one time that I almost cried. When you saw Alan. Oh, yeah, Alan. Alan. I, I'm an Alan, by the way. Yeah. You are the Alan. Because <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, fuck this masculinity bullshit. <laughs> this is Alan. Yeah. There's only one Alan. Um yeah, Barbie, I think everyone in Barbie was good. Um, I think it was so... I mean, obviously, it's like 
the Barbie movie is almost kind of like a fever dream. Yeah. It's, it's a weird, like, the, like the Barbie, Barbie land exists. Yeah. You know, and like, it's a real place. And like, they feel the things that their doll counterpart feels in real life. It's just so weird, but like, it was so like profound yeah. in, a, in a way too. Um, and I think the message, uh, was really, really good too. The message that like life for women is just really hard, you know, and an overbearing patriarchal environment. Yeah. That's the thing. Like everybody, like, all these reviews are like, how it's anti-man. It's not, no, it's not. It's literally just watch the movie. Yeah. You have an understanding from another point of view yeah. that you never want to accept, but it's right. there. They're yeah. telling you like, yeah. it's so annoying, especially like, just seeing all those comments, I'm like, did you even watch the movie? No, they like, didn't. Like, yeah. And if they did, they're just being intentionally obtuse about it. It's because they, they went over the Snyder's cut and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and that's that's why um, I, I'm also a theater critic. Yeah. So I, I read a lot of criticism mm -hmm. about live theater, and I don't really read film criticism that much, partly because it's so male-dominated. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so is theater criticism. Yeah. Um, but... When we're talking about um, capturing the feeling of a moment, or when we're talking about a deep understanding of a piece of popular culture, I think that theater criticism is further ahead right now mm -hmm. than film criticism in how they treat these projects. Um, I just reviewed Beauty and the Beast for the Chicago Reader, and my editor sent me there because I like Disney. Mm -hmm. Because this musical was going to impact me in the way that it will impact audiences mm -hmm. who want to see a Disney musical. Right. When you're sending 60-year-old straight white men to see the Barbie movie, they are, without fault, going to see it as 60-year-old straight white men. Yep. Yeah. That isn't their fault. Mm -hmm. um, they could be the most liberal 60-year-old straight white man. Mm -hmm. And they are still not going to get it on the same level as me or as Kyle, mm -hmm. because Kyle is not a straight white man. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, like literally he's not. So I can use that. Um, but, but part of it is like, we're unwilling to acknowledge it. And a lot of the folks who are having these conversations on social media, a lot of dudes who are coming out and they should just say himbo on their forehead <laughs> Where they're like, oh, this movie is making them hate men. No, babe, we already hated men. Anyway, <laughs> um, like you're just, you're not listening. Like right. this is not a movie for you. And if you can acknowledge that and watch it, and if you're a film, like if you're a film critic and this is just not a film for you, you can say that. Yeah. You can say, I can appreciate what this is doing, but I cannot appreciate it as much as the you know millennial woman who's sitting next to me openly weeping in the theater yeah. Yeah. because clearly there's a disconnect and i it frustrates me to no end that while Greta Gerwig has become the how many records has she broken four mm. for the opening weekend the top mm. one being she's the first female fil like filmmaker to break this huge box office record on opening weekend mm. and that is being completely overshadowed by mostly right-wing media and folks who watch it and consume it who are buying into this idea that this is a vapid film about a doll. Yeah. yeah. Everybody keeps saying it's about a doll. Go, Why would I watch a movie about Barbie? Yeah. But that's so much. Right. There's a beautiful documentary about the making of Barbie called Tiny Shoulders. Yeah. And that's what I keep thinking about whenever people talk about this movie in such a hugely negative connotation is like how much pressure can you put on those tiny shoulders? No. What, like, what could you possibly think this movie about a, like, about a doll, how is that going to harm you? Yeah. Right. Just listen to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> well, I just have then, a lot of feelings. But then America Ferreira's, like, monologue in the middle of the yes. movie. Yes. Where, Man. you know. That's when I She cry. just, like, she just, like, blurts out, like, the truth about, like, women and how you know their their feelings in like the world i have never felt so seen yeah. or so like i have never seen the female experience or just the femme experience because we have to remember that like existing 
as a woman in our in our world does not necessarily mean like cisgender women. So like existing as a femme in the world has never been summarized so succinctly Mm -hmm. as it was in that monologue. And it brought me to tears thinking about how all of those dualities build up. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the Billie Eilish song later on that I keep hearing on TikTok over and over (laughs) and over again, where it's like, I I just, when can I be happy again? Uh, Once we stop playing with our Barbie dolls, we enter into like a new realm of, you know, quote unquote womanhood where all of a sudden we can't be an astronaut and a vet and the president of the United States. Right. We are othered. Yeah. And the film about a doll yeah. shows us that in a way that no other film has ever, no other film that I have personally seen has ever been able to do. Yeah. It was just so much more than I ever thought yeah. that film was going to be. And yeah. I yeah. shouldn't have been surprised. Greta Gerwig is hugely profound. Mm. Lady Bird absolutely shattered my soul. Yeah. Um, there's a reason I don't like Rotten Tomatoes, but there's a reason it has a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. It was like yeah. universally beloved. Yeah. So the fact that she did Lady Bird and then did Little Women. So she took an original story and then she took a story that people are aware of and created such beautiful films and then did a little bit of both Mm. with the Barbie movie. I think that Greta Gerwig's career is now just like forever changed and I cannot wait to see what else she does. She's just incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And I love like how Ken just like is like, oh my god, the real world's ruled by men. Yeah. So Barbie Land should be ruled by men. Yeah. And he immediately goes back and like tries to change everything. You know what I mean? Talk about it. And um yeah. And I love how they like get the the Barbies to come back to their senses by like speaking profound like woman truths to them. Yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> well and that's that's something that people are griping people, himbos, are griping about on the internet. Yeah. It's like, oh, so Ken is reduced to like some pretty boy who's not worth anything, who's only good for, like, being a romantic interest. That's what women Man, are. <laughs> you're so close to the point. Yeah. You're so close. Yeah. But the point's over there, and you're, like, taking a piss in the corner. Yeah. I can't help you. <laughs> I, 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 But also, they intentionally hired so many incredible actors who have these huge breadths of work yeah. that especially like, you know, the entire cast of sex and education, basically um, <laughs> where you have these actors who are capable of so much yeah. and they are doing this like kind of hilarious, like cardboard cutout guy yeah. Yeah. situation. Like Shuti Gatwa, like he's incredible. Yeah, okay. um, go for them. Yeah. Let them have fun. Yeah, like yeah. they just want to, be Ken is right. cool. Yeah. They can be Ken for a minute. We have to be Barbie for <laughs> literally all the time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They'll survive. Yeah. The Mojo Dojo Casa The Mojo House. Dojo, Dojo Casa House. <laughs> I love that, like, immediately when he, like, says that. They're like, the Mojo Dojo Casa Houses, they're just going off the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how did they make them It just already? made me think of Mojo Jojo from Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I kept imagining Mojo him just, Jojo. like, popping out and then, hello. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. And I was like, I don't see him anywhere. The Mojo <laughs> Jojo <laughs> Casa House. And then I was like, oh, he's saying Mojo Dojo. We need to make it a meme. The Mojo Jojo Casa House. Jojo Rabbit. The Mojo Dojo Jojo Rabbit. Rabbit Casa House. Greta Gerwig and... Um, What's his name? Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi. Make a movie oh, together. That would be cool. That would be so cool. Jojo Rabbit Casa House. <laughs> Jojo Rabbit Casa House. Good work. Yeah. So. They can do it. If anybody can do it, it's credit. It's worth really. trying. Yeah. But that movie was great, though. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was really wonderful. good. It was really so good. Beautiful. Margot Robbie was awesome. I love Everybody that part awesome. when she was like sad and she was like, I'm ugly or whatever. Yeah. And then the narrator oh, came yeah. on and they were like, uh, note to self, don't use her if you want to say someone's ugly. Right. <laughs> but also just the fact that, like, Helen Mirren is the narrator yeah, of this movie too, yeah. made my whole life because she's such an icon. Yeah. The fact that this film was just full of icons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it didn't have to be. Yeah. Like, so many of Greta's films don't, like, heavily rely on, an, uh, you know, an A-list cast. Uh-huh. But I think this one needed it. Yeah. To no, Margaret. 
Oh, she was yeah. so good. She's amazing. She was so yeah. good. She goes above and beyond in everything she does. Mm-hmm. And, like, she really gets you with those crying scenes. Like, yeah. It really oh, yeah, strikes yeah. so deep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, man. And I love, really like the scene. My f- favorite scene is probably when she's sitting on the bus stop. Yeah. And she's looking and she's feeling all of the people around her. And it's so cool because, like, yes, like, I go out into the world and sometimes I like to people watch. But, like, that scene, she's, like, looking and just seeing people living their lives, was just kind of moving to watch. And then she turns to that old lady and she's like, you're so beautiful. Well, and I'm I was fairly like, oh. certain. So, first of all, that is uh, Oscar award-winning costume designer Anne Roth. Mm-hmm. Um, even though everybody on the internet thought it was Ruth Handler's daughter, Barbara. Oh, so I was really disappointed afterwards. Oh. And I was like, oh, that wasn't Barbara. But it was Anne Roth. Like, go for you, Anne yeah, Roth. Yeah. Um, but I love that scene, too. And I love that. It, it kind of feels out of nowhere that she says you're beautiful. Yeah. Because we don't say that. Right. To women. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why, like, I, you know, the, the, like Barbie, like thinking of like Barbie, like you'd expect her to turn and be like, oh, you're old or something like that. You know what I mean? Like saying something silly, but she didn't, you know. Because that's not what, like, that's not what Barbie is supposed right. to do. Exactly. Barbie is supposed to be, uh, you know, a, a piece of empowering feminist. Yeah playtime, right. you know, even though that's not necessarily how it's intentioned when you right. hand a little girl a Barbie doll. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Barbie taught us that we can be anything yeah. and then we literally can't. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do with that what you will. <laughs> Did you know, uh, I don't know if you guys knew about it, but the studio executives, whoever it was, they wanted to cut that scene. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Then, Greta said no. She said wow. no. Wow. Well, yeah. Because they were like, you know, they were like, Saying like it doesn't really add much to the story, and right. turns but out, it, guess what? But <laughs> it do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Also, I think that like, uh, that Oppenheimer and Barbie are actually kind of perfect together, mm-hmm. and in part is because the Barbie movie relied so heavily on practical environments. Yeah. Um, it didn't really use CGI. Yeah. They used so much pink paint. They literally yeah. created a shortage around the world <laughs> of did, pink yeah. paint. Yeah. They built those houses. Yeah, yeah. They were actual sets mm-hmm. when they're doing the cute montages they're doing it old school so they're on a little track right. yeah. and they're going in front of backgrounds yeah. all of that is practical yeah. so, nice. so i think so that cool. seeing how they do it with oppenheimer and how they do it with barbie yeah i think it's just, it was just the perfect yeah combination also christopher nolan should write greta gerwig a thank you note yeah because oppenheimer would not have made half as much money as it right. did this weekend yeah. if people were not double featuring yeah. them i, I can so. guarantee you yeah. Who wants to watch a three-hour film about the dude who invented the nuclear bomb? Why? Well, and you? No, same. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Regular, no, yeah. normal people yeah. don't want to watch him make a nuclear bomb. No. Well, and um, we were talking about how um, I heard online that Christopher Nolan was trying to get the Barbie movie moved because he didn't want. The memes, you didn't want the release dates to be on the same day. Well, but also this happened with the that, Dark Knight, too, yeah, he in didn't want that publicity. And there were, the Dark Knight? They Dark Knight were... opened the same day as Mamma Mia. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so he's like, not again! <laughs> but basically, he's like, "You, I want you to move it. And they said no. And then, But he could have moved his movie, but he was like set on that day and he didn't want to move either. Which is actually kind of perfect because men are stubborn and they don't want to move. <laughs> well, and I was, telling, I was telling Kyle during our break, um, I, I don't really understand why he was so upset. Because him being upset is assuming a lot of things about moviegoers, mm-hmm. and a big one is that there's a huge intersectional crossover between Barbie movie people and Oppenheimer people, mm-hmm. and there's just not. Right. The Ven- It's a Venn diagram, if anything, yeah, yeah. and the middle of that Venn diagram is a very specific kind of person yeah. right. that, like, maybe wouldn't have seen it yeah. if it didn't open at the same time. Yeah. 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 Well, if you had told me... We can only see one movie. You want to see Oppenheimer or Barbie? I would have said Barbie hands down. I would have said you Barbie know? hands down. Yeah. I would watch so Greta Gerwig like, Paint a Fence. Yeah, I mean we'd probably see watch Oppenheimer too at some Eventually. point. At some point, but like not you know if you said we only can only see one you know Barbie all the way, man. So, yeah, Barbie all the way. Barbie all the way. <laughs> Go Alan. Go Alan. <laughs> Um, yeah, he was a perfect pick for that role. No, truly. Uh, oh, yeah, Sarah. Michael Sarah was great. I just so want good. a Michael Sarah Kate McKinnon crossover episode <laughs> where it's just like Alan and Weird Barbie go on a trip together. <laughs> but then also, because, like, as a, uh, a you know, millennial, my dad grew up with G.I. Joe's yeah. and he kept a bunch of them. So when I was a kid, 
I would play with my Barbies, but I would also play with his G.I. Joe's. Mm-hmm. So Barbie and G.I. Joe would, like, go on adventures and shit. Yeah. And I just want weird Barbie, Alan, and then, like, some circa 1965 G.I. Joe mm-hmm. to just show up. And then these guys have, like, a weird buddy comedy adventure yeah. that involves nonsense. Oh, it could be an Oppenheimer movie. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Look, perfect. When I was a kid, I had this giant Fisher Price castle, with, like these little knights, and I loved it so much. Yeah. And like I would play with it all the time. But then I'd go over to somebody else's house who had like I have a I have a sister, uh, and she had Barbies and she had dolls and stuff. But I remember when I was really young, I went over to like a friend's house, and they had like a doll house with like like the plastic dolls, and it was like it was a Fisher Price doll house, and I just loved playing with that too, you know, and like. But, like, you, you know, you get into the stereotypes, like, oh, boys should play with this, and girls should play with this, you know what I mean? And um, and I think if somebody didn't tell me what I should be playing with, I'd just be playing with everything, right. <laughs> you know? Um, and so I just think uh, that I, that is something that, that's something that I've, like, um, discovered about myself recently. And things that I don't really think about that I just kind of, like, eh, whatever, that was a long time ago, I don't think about that stuff. But now I think back, and I'm just like... No, that, that's probably if I were to if I wanted to play with girl toys, I probably would have played with girl toys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's why the Barbie movie was such a huge, like, moment for the queer community too, yeah. especially for folks who were like assigned male at birth or yeah. identify, um, you know, as queer men, because a lot of queer men. I just saw Jonathan Van Ness; they posted something about the Barbie movie and how they used to play with Barbies and like mm-hmm. wanted to be more feminine as a kid and it just wasn't acceptable but everyone watching this film who had experiences like that finally felt like it was okay yeah and that's why there's a trend on tiktok right now where you say like it wasn't me who saw that movie yeah it was and then they show you know a picture or video of them when they were little right like it was them they were watching this movie yeah and that's why so many people are moved by it Mm -hmm. because it's finally more okay for everybody yeah. to like be who they are right yeah, yeah. and that's why alan and right. and weird barbie are now like queer icons yeah, yeah, yeah. even though that's not the point of the movie yeah, but yeah. like we've glammed onto them yeah, yeah. because they helped us feel more seen yeah. and it could have been more intersectional i like i i, I get that <laughs> yeah. i i get that part i understand the the dilemma of trying to create this film and have it talk to or speak to being a woman of color or mm. being a trans woman or being non-binary and every other piece of intersectional feminism that goes along with that, but it couldn't do all of it at the same time. Right. It just wasn't possible. Right, right. And I think that Greta Gerwig <clears throat> acknowledged that in a few points in the film, mm-hmm. but especially when, and I'm, I'm blanking on her name now, but America Ferreira's daughter in the film, um, when she says, you go white savior Barbie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like there are so many direct moments where it's clear that Greta Gerwig understood the assignment, yeah. mm-hmm. but also understood that she couldn't do all of it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So I think that even though it couldn't be perfectly intersectional, um, I, I think that she did a really great job addressing it in all of the ways that she could Yeah. without sacrificing the film. Right. Absolutely. I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. <laughs> That's from, uh, what movie is that from? Storks? Storks. <laughs> yeah. Are you in love? I am in love. Are you in love too? I agree, I agree, I agree. <laughs> Alright, well, thank you, Amanda, for coming on the show. Um, I think your um, opinions and your insight are so valuable to us and to yes. movie people everywhere. Um, <laughs> and for, you know, these specific movies. I think you're... you're you have, you have so much good insight. And um, you should just make your own podcast. I'm a very opinionated woman. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, we're not saying bye yet. Nadim and I still have more stuff to talk about. But, hey, good bye. Boy. Bye. Now that uh, Amanda's gone, um, let's get down to the manly manliness. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Uh, that's obviously not... We're just talking about... All that stuff. <laughs> just, just talking about that. How dare um, you forget everything we just talked about? <laughs> so, um, I am a huge anime fan, uh, and Nadim is not. Uh, well, I mean, you're, it's not that you're not an anime fan; it's just you don't watch anime. Have, yes. Have much. you seen any anime? 
Yeah, the basic ones. The, uh, what, uh, what, basic ones. What are the basic ones to you? One Punch Man. Okay. And the first is... Attack on Titan. Okay. Yeah, that's like and some now, of Bleach. Nowadays, it's not like some of Bleach, like 2000 Bleach, or like the new season. No, the one that had the Power Ranger. The Power. Yeah, the voice actor for the main guy was a Power Ranger. Oh, I think he the was, English voice? Yeah, yeah, I think he was the the Black Ranger in the Power Rangers movie. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. In the, the new Power Rangers movie? No, the old one with... um, uh, With the original cast? Yeah. The American cast? Yeah. Yeah, he, he the was... The black guy? No, no, he was... Uh, he played the Black Ranger, I think, in that movie. They didn't... I don't know. They had... Who do I, they have? I only know I only know the the original American cast, which had the Asian woman as the yellow yes. ranger, the black guy as the black ranger, the nerd as the blue ranger, and the white girl as the, the pink ranger, and the, then the, the white guy as the red white ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hispanic dude, I think, was the red ranger. Was he Hispanic? I can't. No, remember. I think the the red ranger was just a white guy. Was he a white guy? Yeah, I think the wild. And then the um the white ranger, the white ranger was actually not. A character in the original Power Rangers. No, they made him. Because no, they didn't make him. He was from a different Japanese show. Was he really? They took a, a character that looked like a Power Ranger from a different Japanese show, and really? then they merged him <laughs> into the Power Rangers. Because the American Power Rangers. Now we're talking about Power Rangers. We went from animated Power Rangers. <laughs> the American Power Rangers basically took the footage from the Japanese show yes, that they made and recreated. Well, they they made their own scenes with the American cast. And then all of the fighting scenes that were them in the Power Rangers was the Japanese, like, footage. Yeah. Um, there's reason for that, too. Yeah. They didn't it, want to pay the actors. Right. It was really bad, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really bad. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I watched the original Japanese Power Rangers. Did you? Um, what's it called? I forget what the original Japanese Power Rangers is called. Um, I know the Green Ranger was was real. He was supposed to be a bad ranger. He was oh, always, okay. like, the enemy one. Yeah. Super Sentai is what it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, but if you watch the original, it has like, it's like so, so different yeah. from, um, uh, from the original, because I think they take the first two episodes of the ja- of the Japanese version and merge it into one episode. Because in, if you're watching the first, the first, first episode of the American Power Rangers, they like just randomly change locations for no reason. They do. Yeah. They're just like fighting out in a field and they're like, Oh, now we're in Tokyo fighting. Like yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. But like in the show, it makes sense because there's two different locations for each episode. Right. <laughs> it's so funny. I used um, to watch that show. Yeah. Like Fox. When, or it was on Fox. when it was on Fox Kids. Yeah, Fox I don't know if you remember that. That yeah. was so oh, Yeah, man. I watched um, the Fox Box. Which one was that? What it was, was that? Saturday morning cartoons, Fox Box on Fox. Oh, you know what? Fox Box. Did I watch it? It turned movie? into four kids. Oh, what? Because they used to have like Ultimate Muscle. Do you ever watch Ultimate Muscle? No, you know what I used to watch? Uh, it was on. Or like Kirby right back It was on ABC, you. I think. Oh, All those okay. shows. So, oh, like, okay. uh, the show with Jackie Chan in it. Um, Jackie Chan Adventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one, um, Kim Possible, all that stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. I used to yeah, love those shows. Kim Possible, yeah. No, when I was in middle school, they had Fox Box, which was basically they would take some of it was licensed anime. Yeah. They would four kids. It was four kids entertainment. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I remember. Yeah. Four kids entertainment would buy anime. Yeah. And then they would like cut it down and change things to make it more quote unquote American. Yeah. So you're your watch. Yeah. They would cut it down and change things to make it more American. Like Pokemon. Like Pokemon they changed um like like all of the like Japanese food that they would eat in the anime, they yeah. changed to like hamburgers and stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and One Piece, they licensed One Piece and they changed all the guns to squirt guns. They took away Sanji's uh Sanji's cigarette is a lollipop. That's ridiculous. Um, and like, uh, there's, it's, uh, and like all the voice acting is so terrible. They like butchered. I think the, all of, I don't know how many episodes they aired, the four kids aired. Yeah. But, um, they, I think they cut out like 50 something episodes worth of content. That's a lot. <laughs> to make it more suitable for children, but it's not made for children. It's like a 16 year old plus a show. Yeah. Um, but anyway. The basic, like, for anime, the basics for me, because I grew up watching anime as, like, younger as a kid. Yeah. Like, like middle school, high school, uh, is, like, Cowboy Bebop and, like, 
Um, oh, like you know what? I watched that one too. Dragon so Ball Z. I watched Cowboy Bebop because of the okay. show that was on Netflix. Oh no! <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, it was really good. I want to see the actual like where it came yeah, from." Yeah. And I watched it. I loved the anime. Yeah. It was so good. Uh, the, the anime is incredible. The it live action so is yeah. not. <laughs> oh, you didn't like the live action? No, because there were so many. So here's the thing. Um, and this is a pretty much a consensus with everybody. I thought. The casting was pretty good. Yeah. I thought that the costumes were really good. I thought the sets were really good. It looked truthful and honest to Cowboy Bebop. And the director was like, oh, I want people to think of this as an expansion to the canon, you know? Oh, okay. So I'm thinking, oh, they're going to come up. It's going to be the same characters, yeah. same places. It's just going to be new stories that yeah. can happen in between the other episodes. Because in Cowboy Bebop, every episode's like a different story. Yeah. And so um, so I thought, okay, if it's an expansion of the canon, they could just make their own stories. But no, they took like the stories from, like they picked certain stories from the show, from the anime, and then decided to just completely change things. Uh... And like a lot of the characters are like completely different. They did, okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. I don't care about, gender swapping or race swapping characters yeah. for like like for that like that didn't bother me as much it was completely just changing the character like entirely like it's not even it's like they just made an original character right. they took a character changed their race changed their sex and then changed their whole personality and what they're saying for all that stuff mm. and that's where i'm just like okay i don't really care for this as much right um and also spike uh, they never, his name is just actually Spike. He doesn't like go by Spike. He didn't have it like, cause it's like, cause his syndicate, like in the live action, his syndicate name is Fearless. Yeah. And I'm just like, that sounds so stupid. I'm like, Vicious sounds stupid, but Vicious is like a cool name. You know yeah. what I mean? Fearless just sounds stupid. And every time he would like yell, he's like, Fearless! I'm just like, oh my God, it's terrible. Um, and then Spike had a kid. He had like an ex-wife and a daughter. Yeah. And then like this cop guy is dating his ex-wife. And it was like, and he went to go visit his daughter and it was just like suburban America. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I'm I guess like, that all makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, this doesn't, because like Kami Bebop is like all of the, yeah, it takes place in space. Like they colonize different, the planets in our solar system. Yeah. And they created, they like recreated some of the cities in those like there's on Mars it's like New York City is basically yeah. on Mars and uh, and yes I could understand maybe like an American suburb would happen in like that but in the anime everything's kind of like like gritty you know what I mean right. like Star Wars how Star Wars is gritty technology and stuff like that yeah. it's similar to that so when you show like a clean Christian neighborhood in the Cowboy Bebop with like this guy dressed up as like Jet you know yeah. it's like what the fuck is this yeah, and I see what you're talking and, about, yeah. yeah. And then there's that episode with the, um, the crazy... Sorry, I'm just going on a rant. No, you're good. The, the, uh, the episode with the um, Pierre Le Fou. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, that was like the worst wire like stunts I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> but here's the thing. Yes. This is a good transition because Tomorrow Studios, who made the live-action copy Bebop, is also making the live-action One Piece. How do you feel about that? So, at first I was apprehensive, but um, Oda, the author of One Piece, um, he is so heavily involved oh, okay. that I think they're going to do a good job with it. Um, and I that's that's kind of the consensus right now, um, after seeing this new trailer that just came out this past weekend. Um, because uh, Oda was the one who wanted a live-action One Piece. Yeah. He, one Piece is ginormous in, in Japan. He is the... Oda is the 10th best-selling fiction author of all time. Really? Yeah. Um, wow. Underneath, like, J.K. Rowling. Yeah. More than Dr. Seuss. Like, it's yeah. crazy. And he, um, it's the number one selling comic book of all time, One Piece is. Nice. Um, like, worldwide comic book, not yeah. American comic books. Uh, more than Superman. Um, wow. And, uh, and it's just crazy. Like, he is, like, really well-known, but not everybody outside of Japan knows what One Piece is. Right. And I think he wants to. I, I think he wants people who aren't anime watchers to enjoy his story of One Piece and stuff yeah. like that. And Netflix picked it up. Tomorrow Studios, Cowboy Bebop, did it. Nobody has a good track record when you adapt anime. Like nothing yeah. that's live action that's anime is good, except for maybe some of the Japanese. I've heard like the Roni Kenshin live action is actually pretty good. Um, the, I know the Death Note live action. They made a couple Death Note live action movies that are pretty decent. Um, Wait, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? What's a manga then? Oh, manga is the comic book. So, so anime. So there's original anime, okay, which is 
original. It's yeah. an anime that's made by a studio who wrote the story, animated it. Um, and then there's anime that's based on manga. Okay. So, like, um, like One Punch Man. One Punch Man was actually a webcomic. Oh, really? Um, the guy who wrote oh, it cool. can't draw for shit. No. <laughs> and so he just drew what he could, and it looks so bad. Yeah. But he didn't care because he wanted to tell this story. And so, uh, but it got so popular that um, this um, mangaka artist, um, uh, sorry, a mangaka is somebody who writes manga. Okay. Um, he's, he's a mangaka artist. He doesn't write story. He only illustrates. Right, right. And so he was dying. He, was, he wasn't dying, but he was like really sick, and he thought he might have died. I think... I don't know if he had cancer, but he's in the hospital yeah. and he was thinking to himself about how much he loved One Punch Man. And he's like, <laughs> I wish I could illustrate One Punch Man someday. Yeah. And then whatever, he had to take a, do like some procedure and he survived. And then, um, then, and he, because of that, he approached the guy who makes One Punch Man, the webcomic. Yeah. His name is One. That's his code name. Okay. Um, and he said, can I illustrate it? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he illustrates. So he basically takes source which is this shitty looking webcomic yeah. turns it into this fucking amazing looking manga <laughs> yeah. it's like illustrated so well and then they made turned it into an anime that's awesome that. that's yeah. pretty cool that's a good story M- most anime is based on manga yeah um and a lot of the times they do it they try to copy the artist's style like what the characters look like and all that stuff and um and they try to keep it shot for shot um, there are times, sometimes they take liberties and they like, they're like, oh, you know, this action sequence is cool, but, uh, it would only last like two seconds right. in anime. So let's make it longer. So then they'll animate more things to make right. it like a longer fight scene or something like that. Um, cause a lot of like one piece fight scenes are just like two panels. It's like, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Or like two, three panels, you know? And so, um, but to make it like longer and to like make it feel more impactful, they have to like add more stuff to it. Um, which makes sense. So, I was wondering, because there's this uh, manga called Giver. Have you ever heard of it? No. Giver, yeah, I've heard of Giver. Yeah, so I never read it, but I saw the show that came out in like, the 80s or mm-hmm. something like that. Whatever was available on YouTube, and it was yeah. like amazing. Because I watched a movie okay. that came out in the 1990s. Um, funny enough, the main character was is the voice of Solid Snake. Oh, so David Hayter? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> he's, a, he's a main character. He's, he is Guyver in that movie, that's too. That's awesome. It is pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Which I didn't know that, too. And I was playing Solid Snake. What was I playing? Snake Eater at the oh, time. Right. Yeah, yeah, When I was on P- PS2 way back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah. So, yeah, he was in that movie, and I love that movie. Like, Guyver was an amazing movie. That's awesome. And then I figured out there was an uh, anime on it. But that <laughs> anime is based on a manga that came out a while ago as well. Yeah. In the 70s or something. Yeah, yeah. So, that's three. I heard David Hayter got fired. Did he? Yeah, I think the, the most recent... Um, I, don't don't quote me on this. I just I just heard something on the internet. I mean, I don't play. About, that's the last time I played was PS2. So. Oh, okay, I heard that he um like the most recent solid Metal Gear Solid game. He just they just hired somebody else to do his that's wild. Solid Snake's voice. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played. I've only played the first Solid Snake game. I want to play the other one. Solid Snake game, Metal Gear Solid game. <laughs> yeah, I think I played the second one. So whatever oh, okay. that, whatever Snake. That was on Eater PS2. Is. Yeah. Or no, Snake Eater is number three. So yeah, I've, yeah. I've only played the third one. Oh, that okay. was it. That's never... when you're in the jungle. You yeah. Plays big boss. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, yeah. No, I need to. I have such a big video game backlog, so I want to show you this One Piece live action trailer, and just watch it, um, and then you can tell me your thoughts afterwards, and if you'd like to watch it or not. Deal. If you think it looks, I hate it. Or not. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even started it yet. Here we go. Ready? Anyway, yes, go ahead. I didn't know there were so many pirates. Terrible. I know, right? Where's my face? <laughs> so yeah. As a as a One Piece fan, I think this looks really, really good. Yeah. What do you think? I think it was amazing. Yeah. I, think... If I had not, if like, if I didn't know anything about One Piece, I would have watched it regardless. Okay. Did you think? My biggest complaint. Yes. Is how Arlong looks now. Arlong is the fish man. He's got the big, oh, okay. the big yes. pincer nose thing. Did you think he looked silly, or do you think he looked fine? I, th- I mean, I've seen a lot of movies, so I think he looked fine. Oh, okay. So I, my my younger brother was like, "Oh, I think he just looks like a like a like an alien from Star Trek or whatever." Yeah. Like, I don't think. I mean, it's prosthetics, you know. it's, yeah. it's practical. So like, you know, and and Arlong looks like that in 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 the anime. Yeah. Um, he's got this big. It's not. I call it a pincer nose. It's just a big. Um, because he's supposed to be like a like a. A shark, yeah, uh, the sword, like a swordfish yeah, shark yeah. kind of a thing, because uh, he has a big fin on the back of his on his back, uh, on the back of his back, and uh, 
And so that's what he looks like. Um, but the thing is, is like, you can't really do, unless you alter him, like, totally. I mean, they could have made his nose, like, shorter. Right. And probably would have looked a little, maybe a little bit better. But also, a lot of people have a complaint because he's, like, huge in the anime. Like, he's yeah. just so built. And he's so, he's, like, twice as big as Luffy. And he just kind of looks like small you know yeah. and the guy the guy the actor who's playing him isn't like super built either right um but it's fine i think in the context of the whole like this show i think um i think it'll be fine but yeah the author oda is really heavily involved he had like final say on the casting choices mm-hmm. um because he wanted like he wanted the he wanted everyone to look like the characters right which i think is really really cool and really important when you're adapting something because you want you want it to still feel Right. Like that. Like, the Cowboy Bebop like, live action didn't feel like Cowboy Bebop to me. Yeah. Like, like it did in a sense, but it didn't also. Right. I felt very detached from the anime universe of Cowboy Bebop. Whereas I feel like this, obviously, this is just a trailer. You know, this doesn't sh- you know, showcase how that show is actually going to be. But it still feels like One Piece. The guy who's playing Luffy, I think is embodying Luffy really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think all of the acting choices um, were really good. He actually said, Oda said in a, in a manga volume at one point that um, he, he said, like, somebody asked him, like, what nationality would the Straw Hat Pirates be? He's like, Luffy would be Brazilian, Zoro would be Japanese, yeah. Sanji would be French, and, you know, and stuff like that. And I think, uh, I think he said Nami would be Swedish and Usopp would be uh, from Africa. Yeah. And so, like, that's what they... They basically did that. I mean, yeah. in, in Aki Godoy, who's playing Luffy, is Mexican. He's not Brazilian, right? But he's you know Latino and like and then uh, I think I think Sanji's actually from Spain. His actors from Spain. Yeah. But they went and got the actors that Oda wanted, like the people that he thought would look like them and be them in real life. That's and pretty I cool. Think that's so cool. Yeah. Um, he actually Oda. Um, they they made sure that Oda was like um, Oda was the one who said. He got final say of when, like, when it was going to go out, and like they wanted to make sure he was happy with it. Yeah. And um, he actually made them go back and reshoot certain scenes really? that he thought weren't good enough. Wow. And I think that's really, really big and really good. Um, because and it, he it, he even said too that like I don't know I don't know if it was Oda who said it or somebody else said it, but they were talking about how like there was a little bit when they first started there was a little bit of disconnect where Oda wasn't really happy yeah. with how they were doing it. Um, and then they finally got on the same wavelength, and so then they wanted to make sure he was happy because it's his thing, you know. It is, yeah. I mean, um, there's a lot riding on this, right? right now, so. Yeah, and so, um, and so people think that if One Piece, if if this does really well, this might change live action anime adaptations forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's going to be a standard now. Uh, somebody said that Oda was looking at certain scenes that they were like cutting together. Yeah. Um, I don't, they were cutting it. Yeah. They were filming them. And he, I think he went to go oversee the project while they were filming. Yeah. And he was telling them, he's like, no, no, you guys are doing this scene wrong. And they're like, well, Oda, for, you know, an adaptation, this is how we have to do it for like cinema. Right. And he's like, yeah, but you're changing. You guys don't understand the significance of this scene. Like, right. you guys just don't get it, you know? And he's like, the reason I wrote it this way was because it needs to be this way. And so that's why he, you know, I think it was really big that he did that, you know, that he yeah. told them. Yeah. You know, and like, yeah, I understand that there's like liberties you have to take, but you can do it equally. Right. Like both, you know? Definitely, so, yeah. So I think it'll be, I think it'll be good. We'll see. I could be completely wrong. Come out and just be like, but the trailer be could be amazing, but then <laughs> right. the actual show is exactly. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about... I know we're, we've been recording for a while. That's fine. Um, I wanted to talk about some new games. video games that are coming out in August. There's a game that I'm really excited for that comes out in August. Sea of Stars is this game that I have been following for quite a few years now. Um, do you ever... I, you didn't really play the Super Nintendo growing up, did you? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I remember... I think we had one. I primarily grew up playing the Super Nintendo, yeah. Because um, I'm I'm 35, I, you know. I grew up in the 90s. Um, yeah, same totally. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but um, but one of my favorite games, and it's my older brother's favorite game of all time, is Chrono Trigger. It's a it's a classic JRPG game about a group of kids who accidentally like build a time machine. Yeah. Like one of the characters makes a teleporter, and it accidentally breaks like the time like creates a time warp and they right, get sucked right. in yeah. and so um and so initially they they get sucked in they want to get back well 
a girl gets sucked back to the past and they have to go rescue her and they bring her back to the main time period. Um, and then they get lost in the future at some point and they see that the future is just completely destroyed Yeah. and they want to figure out what happened and they find out this creature comes up from the ground and just destroys everything. Yeah. So they want to prevent it. So then yeah. they do this whole adventure through like space and time to like try and prevent. They go to all these different time periods and you pick up different characters from different time periods. Yeah. And it's just a really, really good game. Um, and nobody has... It's considered one of the greatest games of all time. Um, but nobody has created a game quite as good. Um, like a JRPG game that's, in my opinion, is quite as good as Chrono Trigger. But this game, Sea of Stars... Um, have you ever played The Messenger? No. Okay. It's a 2D platformer game. Okay. It's the, the that team. I don't know I don't remember what they're called. I'll find out. Um, but they're basically making it like... It's a Chrono Trigger spiritual successor. Yeah. So it's going to play like Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is... Um, if you played like JRPGs, you know it's like turn-based combat. Yeah. In Chrono Trigger, you have different characters learn different abilities, and then their different abilities can be combined to create like a super like attack. And so like like Chrono learns Cyclone, which he just like swirls his sword around, and then Luca learns Flame Thriller, and then together you can do Flame Cyclone. Right. So like she could throw her Flame Thriller onto onto on his sword, and it swirls around and does like a bunch of more damage. I don't and know. So, if- I'm sorry. I, I was gonna say I don't know if you know this game because it's from back in the day mm-hmm. on PlayStation One and Two, I believe. Mm-hmm. But X Men Apocalypse. I've heard of that one. I've I think it's it. like that then. Oh, okay. Because I played. I remember playing X Men Apocalypse Two on PlayStation mm-hmm. Two, and it was like you get your characters together, and I think you could combine their powers to oh, make okay. a more powerful. Was it an attack. RPG? Um, or was it more of like a action adventure? I think it was an RPG. Oh, okay. Man, I can't remember. I, I, re- I really can't remember. It's been so long. Um, sea of Stars is made by Sabotage Studio. Is, is okay. the name of it? But yeah, it comes out at the end of August. And it, like it's pixel art too, so it looks it looks so cool. Are there any games in August that you're excited for? Not August, but September. Yes, I believe oh, there. Are, September. Okay. There are three games coming out in September. I think. Which ones? Uh, City Skylines. You okay. Play that one? Two. Um, I have not played City Skylines. Is that like I... a, a Sim City kind of a thing? Yes, but way better. Okay. Because I don't think you need internet access for this one. But anyway, that's just, <laughs> that's just a shot at SimCity. But um, City Skylines, the first one, was amazing. It was okay. definitely like based off of SimCity. Not based off of, but it was the same thing, but like mm-hmm. better in some ways. And then they, that one, I don't remember when it came out. Early 2010s sometime? I don't know. Okay. But this new one's coming out, and it's everything that everybody wanted from the first one it has it seems like most of that stuff in this mm-hmm. new one so i cannot wait for that one yeah but the biggest ones are going to be payday three if you ever play payday oh yeah i have not but i know i know payday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's going to be coming out and i love move games where like you have to work together uh-huh. as like that and you have yeah, yeah. four people and you can make it happen <laughs> i cannot wait for that but star what did i say starfield oh starfield yeah yeah starfield yeah so man i you know i love bethesda yes me too um but, but at the same time, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's it's Starf- a pace, I feel like Starfield's going to come out and it's like this big, it looks good, and it's going to be great, and then it's going to have so many glitches. Like, oh, like, absolutely. Like I already Skyrim. know what's going to happen. I really hope it doesn't, <laughs> but uh, like I really hope that it they don't do that because they've mm-hmm. had a, a good amount of time to uh, do this. I think, I can't remember if it was them or someone, but I think one of the issues was they started creating a game and then the new consoles came out uh-huh. and then they had to redo everything for the new consoles because oh, there man. are like different requirements and all yeah. that stuff. But the one thing about Starfield is that it's um, exclusive to Xbox. Oh, okay. So nobody on PlayStation is going to be able to play it. I think you can play it on PC because yeah, yeah. Uh, through the... Um, what's that called? The store? The Yeah, the, the Xbox games. Uh, a- a- game, game Pass. Pass. Yeah. yeah. I should know this. I pay for Game <laughs> Pass. I use it all the time. But um, it's going to be exclusive to Xbox. So at least the good thing is that there is no like trying to make it work for both consoles. Oh, yeah. So like they could focus on just one console. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my biggest worry is the glitches and yeah. the fact they had all this time. I mean, I'm not saying that like they should be doing a good job. Like it's hard to make a game, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's hard to make like a blockbuster of a game too. When it comes from a company like Bethesda, who's had all like not the best history, but like really good history. Yeah, yeah. you know, 
Especially after like their most recent Fallout seventy six when that came out, oh, and yeah. that was a disaster. Yeah, that was a disaster. <laughs> the game now is great though. Oh yeah, that's like, that, I have actually heard that. Yeah. Yeah, like the game right now, if you played it, it's so easy to get into. Mm. Uh, it's wonderful. It's so much fun. But when it first came out, it was a barren wasteland full of glitches all yeah, over. Yeah, so, yeah. but I heard it also didn't look very good too. Yeah. Well, I guess if you're making it like a game that you play multiplayer online, like an it's, MMO, yeah. you want to have it so that you can get the most players you can, and so yeah. if you bring the graphics down, then you can get people to have that like potato. But easy. like you have like GTA Five, which came out in 2012, yeah, and that game still looks amazing yeah. online. Granted, it's definitely dated now compared yeah, yeah. to everything else around right. it, but like the fact that they can make that look so beautiful and have up to like 20 people or something—I don't know what it was. Yeah. So that should be fun. But yeah. I've seen these like, like triple a games that come out like the like the what was the new batman game um with the like you play as like that girl and stuff it was made by the guys oh, who do mind. the arkham asylum games I don't know, that one, mind, yeah. oh, okay i don't remember what it was called but it was like the sequel to the arkham the arkham games the batman arkham games yeah and they were comparing the graphics to Ar- uh, arkham knight yeah and arkham knight came out what, like 2016 or 17? I think so. And it, like, looks incredible. And this game just came out, and it doesn't look nearly as good. And I'm just like, this is, like, five years apart. Like, yeah. how are you, like... There there are some games that, like, like Red Dead Redemption, the first one, well, there is only one, but mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption, when that came, came out, it was, like, mind-blowing. So how yeah. beautiful, like, you see the strands of muscles in the horse and yeah. all that stuff. And our games that are coming out now where it's, like, not even half near that. You know, it's not the same company or anything, right, but it's right. just still, like, the technology back then was really, like, top of the line. Yeah. Now it's standard. How come it's not, you right. know? Yeah, but, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things that take place, right. time, money, And, you know, obviously graphics don't make yeah. the game good, obviously. Right. But I think if you're, one of, if one of your top selling points is, like, great graphics, right. you know, at least I should look, should look good. I mean, there are so many things that newer games have that I think take away from how graphics look. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know they're trying to make it look more realistic, but sometimes when you have like smoke effects and stuff like that, yeah. sometimes it can take away from how good everything else looks. I feel like if you're trying to make it like, like in cyberpunk, like, I mean, cyberpunk didn't look that great, to be honest. Uh, obviously that game had a shitload of glitches, yeah. but I mean, like it was like, it looked good, but like it didn't at the same time. It was weird. I don't know. I don't know how to describe you know it. that reminds me like the one game I had so much hope for was uh, what's that? Oh man, now I I know I'm blanking out. You could like hack anybody's phone and do whatever. Oh, Watch oh. Dogs. What was it? Watch Dogs. Yeah, Watch Dogs. Yeah, yeah. I did not like that game. I I've heard a lot of people because like that game. I thought it was gonna be a really good game and I got into it. Nothing about that game was good. First off, that's not what Chicago looks like. Right. <laughs> they got like Sears Tower in there, yeah. and I was in. They're like, oh, it's Chicago. And I'm just like, what is? There's a huge garden like. Half the city is a garden. What is this? There's like a suburb right outside. Uh, anyway. I would that. love to see a game that does Chicago one-to-one. Like how Spider-Man does New York one, basically one-to-one. Manhattan. Driver 2 <laughs> from like the PlayStation 1. Oh, really? Got it right, I oh, think. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. That's I remember uh, I would drive to Navy Pier and then I would drive to, uh, what's it called? Com- Comiskey Park or something like that? Oh, no, okay. Soldier Field. I think I would oh. drive to Soldier Field. But yeah, you could do all that stuff. Right. So well, that, maybe that here in Soldier cool. Field, they were not that yeah. far apart. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think, because they only had, like, it was PlayStation 1, so they could only do so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you could drive to both of those locations, so yeah. that was pretty cool. That's awesome. But I think that's the only game I can think of. So. Yeah. But that was also, like, PlayStation 1. You couldn't get out the car. Oh. You could only drive. I've seen GTA 5 mods that make, oh, like, man, Chicago maps. Um, I saw one that was, like, Michigan Avenue. Yeah. Um, and obviously it was like super empty, but somebody was like driving up and down right. Michigan Avenue in like a GTA 5 mod. It was pretty cool. It looked really, really See, cool. See, I would have loved it if like GTA or Fallout came out and it was taking place in Chicago. Yeah. The, I mean, the Midwest does exist in Fallout, but it's also like one of those areas where they did not do much lore for. Yeah. So there isn't really much you could go off of aside from the fact that there was a, uh, what do you call that thing that floats in the sky? A uh, Zeppelin? Yeah, there was like a Zeppelin from the Brotherhood <laughs> of Steel that flew over. Oh, okay. That was all, I, that's all I remember from that. And yeah. then, with uh, GTA 6, it's going to be in Vice City again. Yeah. So, that yeah. sucks, but also would love to see how Vice City looks on the new yeah, like, yeah, yeah. thing. So, it's like... And it's yeah. also going to be... I think it's going to be like present day Vice City, yeah. too. Not not like 80s Vice yeah, City. Yeah, it's going to be... Hopefully, it's like 12 years yeah. or whatever. 10 years? No. 11 years now after oh, okay. the GTA oh, 5. Oh, yeah. Man, I can't believe GTA 5 has been out for 11 years already. 
and it's still not cross compatible. Yeah. It blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. But it's free on Game Pass if you have Game Pass. I don't pay for it. It just came out. The other thing is, I was paying for Game Pass, but then I just wasn't using it. Yeah. So I'm like, no, that makes sense. And I have this huge library backlog on Steam that I need to <laughs> catch up on. I have way too many games to play. Have you heard of a. Uh, this is totally tangible, but like, um, Medieval Total War? No, Total War. Me- medieval Total War? Yeah. I, I've heard of it. Is it like a first person, like. No, no, no. no. Um, it's like a it's like a strategy game where you can, like, control, like, an uh, army of thousands of like, soldiers to fight other soldiers. It's real time strategy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a thousand hours, I think a thousand plus hours on that game. Oh, my God. <laughs> on my Steam <laughs> account, but I haven't played that in, like, yeah. years now. I'm not a big RTS person. No. I love that stuff. Um, I, I used to, like, I played the original Warcraft. I actually have. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here, but I have, I have the Warcraft three, oh, the box for Warcraft three down there. <laughs> is that what that is? RTS. Yeah, real time strategy. Really? RTS. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Basically, like... anything that's like you command troops and you yeah. build like like the barracks and you have all that. Yeah. Like civilization is an RTS. I never knew that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Warcraft... I know. I played. I played Civilization and Age of Empires. Oh, okay. I loved Age of yeah. Empires. Yeah. Warcraft one, two, and three were RTS, and then they wow. made Starcraft. And then they made World of Warcraft, and World of Warcraft became so huge that they were just like, See, let's bank everything. Yeah, yeah, they're like, let's bank everything into World of Warcraft. <laughs> Basically, World of Warcraft takes place after Warcraft three, mm. um, but it's an MMO and not an RTS game. Yeah, um, that's why I didn't know. I always yeah. knew it as an MMO. Well, and then everyone wanted them to make a sequel to StarCraft. Yeah. Um, they were going to make a first-person shooter game that was going to be in StarCraft universe, yeah. but then they decided to just make a StarCraft two, and then they decided so the original StarCraft had. Um, there's three campaigns. You play as the Terrans, the and then the other two, the Zerg, and then the Prometheans. Not Prometheans. I don't remember what they're called. Um, I haven't played that game in forever. The Promiscuum. But there's three different campaigns. You play through them, and then there was like um, there was like a not a DLC, but like you can get an expansion pack that would like. You would play as all three campaigns again. It would continue the story. Yeah. But then when they made StarCraft Two, they're like, "Oh, we're gonna do three campaigns as well, but we're gonna sell them separately as oh, full price games." God. And I'm just like, the EA at different it or times too. Yeah. Um, of course. All yeah, that no, I'm sorry. Activision owns Blizzard. Oh, that makes so sense. So it was Activision that did it because uh, it was Activision it. bought them when they were developing it. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, oh yeah, we want to do three campaigns like See, the other one. And they do that like, to pay off. They're like, no, you them. do one campaign, you release it, then we'll do the next campaign, then you release it. Yeah. You know, and so they did it like. They spaced out the games, too, so that you would buy they them. They did that just so they could pay off buying them. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you can buy them all together now as one yeah. game. But like, Still trash. Yeah. It's, ugh, it's terrible. It's I know. They, they did that with um, Modern Warfare 2. Oh, did they? So the storyline for Modern Warfare 2 was supposed to be a storyline, mm-hmm. but I guess it was too long or whatever it is, so now they're cutting it and turning it into Modern Warfare 2, but like a third game. Oh, weird. Now, so like there's Modern Warfare... The, the remaster... Uh, the re, they redid it, so like okay. there's Modern Warfare... The first one, uh-huh. that's, like, the brand... They, they just restarted the storyline, basically. Mm-hmm. But, the, you know, there's... Anyway. Um, yeah, so there's, like, at the end of the the last mission in the thing, or whatever it was. I don't know. There's... <laughs> I forgot where it was, but, okay. like, you you get a call or, or something, and then, like, mm-hmm. uh, you're like, yeah, is that the next target? And they're like, yeah, it's the target. And it's, like, the main bad guy from the previous games. Like, the previous oh. generation of uh, whatever. Uh-huh. Where he was... He was... Have you ever heard of, like, the No Russian thing? Mm-mm. No, so the, it was like this one mission. It was like super controversial because you go okay. into a th- airport that's loaded with people and you shoot everybody. Oh jeez! And the whole idea of that <laughs> was that like the guy who's heading, like leading that charge, uh-huh. is a guy who's um, using this as a way to start a world war. Okay. So he's gonna go in there pretending to be um, whatever it was, and your character has to be in on it, otherwise uh-huh. he's gonna know. Right. But at the end. Spoiler alert, if you never play this game <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> uh, your character gets shot at the end, right okay. before they leave the airport, and you're, like, the Russians, because you're not supposed to leave any Russians mm-hmm. alive, the Russians find out your character is a CIA agent, okay. and obviously that starts a world war between yeah. the U.S. and Russia, because we just killed a whole bunch of their civilians. Right. Yeah. Now, that guy is the main bad guy again in this new uh, okay. game. Yeah. So, I was like, oh, that's going to be great. It's probably going to come out as a DLC. Nope, it's going to come out as a whole brand new game. Oh, wow. So instead of paying $20 $30, you're going to yeah. have to pay $77 for a brand new game. Seven? Because that's how much new games cost now. Oh, with tax? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay. But, um, yeah, so you play a brand new game. Uh-huh. So it's annoying because everything you've just done in this game right. 
It doesn't matter because you're going to have a brand new game because yeah. this one just came out last year. <laughs> Whatever. But it's what Call of Duty does anyway. And I'm probably going to buy the game because yeah. I'm stupid and I want to see how the storyline continues, but whatever. You're not stupid for wanting to see how the storyline continues. I'm stupid for supporting their <laughs> system. <laughs> and yeah, I hate that I'm doing it. They know they got you by the balls. They do, <laughs> and it sucks. I just bought another DLC, but have you ever watched The Boys? Oh, I love The Boys. They came out with yeah. um, Starlight, Homelander, and, oh, cool. and uh, Black Noir. Is that his name? Yeah, Black Noir. Yeah. He's the Batman yeah. parody. They yeah. came out with their, their characters in that game. That's awesome. It is pretty cool. But I got uh, Starlight for free because I had I didn't get it for free. I paid for it. Yeah. I paid for the... What's that thing called? Season Pass? And they give you like oh, a whole okay. bunch of points and I had enough points to yeah. fire. That's cool. Yeah, I love... I watched The Boys last year. I watched... Because the new the Season 3 came out and then I watched... I saw... I kept getting recommended to me and I was like, I'm just going to watch these because I didn't know anything about it. I kept seeing, seeing people post memes too and yeah. I, I didn't know anything about it. And I thought it was going to be... I knew that it was like the superheroes were the bad guys. Um, but I thought the boys were another group of superheroes that were like the good guys so yeah. i thought it was like bad superheroes versus good superheroes or something i didn't know what it was about yeah but then a little did i find out that it was you know some lady's about to sit on someone's head and it's about to explode <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens <laughs> or like not even that the first like 30 seconds of the of the very first episode yeah it's just a mist of blood that, and that's why that's what like i know it's like crazy but like is the the shock value of that just hooked me right away i know and i was like, like oh this is gonna be great i yeah, love the show already yeah and like I, you didn't see it you don't see it coming because no. they're just having a regular conversation she's a foot off the curb and then just boom it's like slow motion and blood everywhere and Such you're like show. holy fuck and i'm just like nope i'm just gonna binge all of this right now <laughs> i know I, I cannot wait for the new season yeah I know, it's gonna be good so yeah, um, I was definitely traumatized by the first episode of season three. Yeah. With, with uh, what's his name? The Tick? No, not the Tick. What's his name? The Termite. Termite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was. Uh... We won't talk about it. <laughs> it was. It was very. That whole episode. Yeah. Love it, sausage was there. It's funny. My older brother, because uh, I was telling my brothers, I'm like, oh, this it, you guys gotta watch it. It's so good. Yeah. My brother was like, he's like, no, my coworker told me about this scene. Is that scene, and and he's like, and I will never watch it because if he described it in like extreme detail, and I do not want to watch that show. I'm like, it's not that bad. Like no. it is, but like it's not. Yeah, like, <laughs> you're so used. It's just to one all the part blood, of the show, for right? You're so used to all the blood and guts in the show already that once you get to that point, it's just like, yeah, it's kind of like horrifying, but it's like whatever. <laughs> like you expect something like this. Yeah, it's not like you're just like, oh my god. It's yeah. just like, oh wow, I didn't know they could go that far too. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think one of my favorite parts was when, um, what's her name, Kimiko? Yeah. And she, like, uh, shoves the dildo through that guy's yeah. face from the back of his head. <laughs> Did you ever watch Bullet Train? Oh, yeah, yeah. She I was in it. there. It's, yeah, she was in that, yeah. yeah. Dude, Bullet Train's actually really good. It is such a good movie. Um, I, so I, good. I didn't expect, because I remember seeing the trailers, and I'm like, this looks, like, campy and bad. Yeah. Um, but then... I had a friend who was like, you got to watch it. It's so good. So I watched it on a flight. We were on a flight and I watched it and I'm like, holy shit. It was very Tarantino. Um, yeah. Tarantino is shot very much like that. And, um, and yeah, I thought it was very, very good. Um, I love that, uh, Michael Shannon was in it yeah. at the end. Um, I did, I tell you, so, um, um, Amanda is a, is a theater critic. And yeah. so she used to be part of the Jeff Awards committee which the Jeff Awards is like the Tonys of Chicago. Okay. And uh, so we went to one of the awards, uh, one of the award ceremonies, and Michael Shannon was sitting like directly in front of us. Like, really? I could reach forward and just like grab his head. General him. Zod was right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's um, so crazy. Because he, he owns a theater in Chicago here. Oh, does he? Um, oh, that's yeah, cool. the Red, Red Orchid, I believe is what it's called. Um, and he, he writes plays and people perform his plays and stuff. Yeah. And he won a Tony Award. Not a Tony Award, I'm sorry. A Jeff Award. Yeah. And uh, But I didn't realize he was sitting there until they announced him and he stood up and walked down there. I'm like, you are sitting right in front of us this whole time? <laughs> That's so cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. And then, uh, but then, yeah, he came back and sat down. I'm like, did you just touch his head? Like, Because we were like right behind him. Um, but then he got, after the Jeff Award was done, he got up and started talking to other people. And he yeah. left his Jeff Award on the floor. And Amanda was like... I could just reach down and just take it. <laughs> you could? <laughs> Shut up. But, yeah. He doesn't need it. It was kind of cool. I, um, but yeah, I didn't, he was busy. I didn't want to like stop and right. say hi to him and be like, oh, I'm a big fan, you know. Um, so yeah. I think that'll wrap it up. This is pretty, this has been a pretty long episode. Yeah. So, it was good though. It was fun. I think it was good. It was definitely fun. All right. Uh, we'll catch you next time on uh, Pixel Punks. Yes, sir. Pixel Punks podcast. Peep, peep.
P. Yeah, PPP. The triple P thing, where they give you money from the government or something. The what? Do you remember during no, COVID? No. The something protection plan. Oh. Uh, don't mind me. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> it was a real thing, I swear, but I forgot what it was called. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>